His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received the Glebia Palace today. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Al Mullah, Shura Council Speaker Ali Al Saleh, and members of both councils in the presence of the former Representative Speaker Khalifa Al Dahrani. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister said that the Kingdom of Bahrain is not the only country that has made exceptional decisions to face the circumstances imposed by the economic challenges. He said most of the region's countries were forced to take similar steps to overcome the repercussions of the current phase, despite of the different level of impact of the new economic challenges on the countries of the region. He added that the rapid changes imposed a new situation that decreased available options and alternatives, saying that difficult and exceptional decisions had to be made. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister expressed thanks and appreciation for the legislative authority's stances in serving the country and the people and conveying their demands. He stressed the government's keenness to reinforce cooperation and coordination between the executive and legislative authorities and guarantee the sustainability of joint cooperation for the best interests of the country and the people. The Prime Minister confirmed the importance of intensifying efforts to overcome the challenges of the ongoing stage and welcomed different visions and views that would serve the general interests of the country and the citizens.
His Royal Highness uh, Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired Iqbabia Palace today, the weekly cabinet meeting. His Royal Highness commended the royal speech regarding regional developments during a meeting with His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in the presence of His Royal Highness uh, Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and senior state officials. The cabinet meeting also praised the success of the seventh ceremony of the UNESCO King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa Prize for the use of information and communication technologies in education which was held at the UNESCO's headquarters in Paris and attended by the Deputy Premier Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa on behalf of His Majesty the King. The cabinet said that the prize confirms His Majesty the King's care and encouragement for education, which is the source of knowledge, creativity and innovation, and it is a pillar for development and civilization's progress. His Royal the Prime Minister followed up the ongoing preparations made by the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunication and other relevant authorities to host the 4th Bahrain International Air Show, which is set to kick off on Thursday. With regards to challenges facing the general budget, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister assigned the relevant authorities to decrease and monitor government spending, especially related to government officials. The directives come in line with Bahrain's steps to deal with the challenges facing the general budget due to the fall in oil prices in the international markets and protect the future of the country as the government has started with itself to minimize its spending and guarantee the continuity of the development process. The Prime Minister also hailed the efforts of the Ministry of Commerce, Industry and Tourism with regards to communication with the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry to provide needed support and assistance for the Chamber to continue performing its vital role in strengthening the national economy. The Cabinet reviewed a memorandum regarding the tax for protecting national manufacturers from foreign competition. The memorandum comes in implementation of the recommendations of the National Audit Office to continue a 20% customs tax on important goods and products similar to the products of national industries. The meeting also reviewed a memorandum on the system to protect consumers in the Gulf Cooperation Council countries. The law comes in line with the GCC member states to unify Gulf laws and achieve economic integration in addition to protecting the interests and safety of consumers and preserve their rights. The cabinet also took note of several proposals issued by the Representatives Council. Now, following the meeting, the Minister of Information and Parliament Affairs, Isa Al Hamadi, held a press conference in which he outlined the issues discussed during the cabinet meeting. The minister confirmed the firm constitutional principle of separation of authorities and cooperation amongst them, saying that any requests regarding constitutional tools will be dealt with in accordance to the legal and constitutional framework, including any official request to interrogate any minister. Minister Al Hamadi pointed out that the government action plan is clear with regards to its policies on reducing spending and increasing revenues. With with regards to regional and international issues, the minister explained that lifting sanctions or relations between the U.S. and Iran are not an issue for Bahrain. He pointed out that Bahrain has strategic historic relations with the United States and efforts are ongoing to further boost them. Also during the press conference, Hamadi affirmed that Bahrain International Air Show has developed by attracting major airline companies and is now 80% self-funded. The commander of the Royal Guard, Brigadier General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received yesterday at the Isa Air Base in the attendance of the Royal Guard Special Force Commander, Major His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the BDF's task force soldiers as they participate in the Operation Restoring Hope in Yemen alongside the Saudi-led Arab Coalition. The meeting was attended by senior BDF officers and families of the soldiers. His Highness expressed his thanks and appreciation to the soldiers for their dedication in performing their national duty alongside the Saudi-led Arab Coalition forces and hailed the remarkable sacrifices made in order to restore legitimacy in Yemen.
Minister of Energy Dr. Abdul Hussein Mirza took part in the International Renewable Energy Agency IRENA General Assembly meeting, which is being held in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates on the sidelines of the Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week. The minister explained Bahrain's strategy with regards to energy sustainability through finding renewable sources of energy in Bahrain, most notably solar and wind energy. He said Bahrain's government is seeking through the program of the Sustainable Energy Unit to set a national plan for energy efficiency and another plan for renewable energy, in addition to unifying efforts in this regard. The minister also welcomed cooperation with IRENA to benefit from the agency's experience in this regard. Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week is a groundbreaking global forum that unites thought leaders, policymakers and investors to address the challenges of renewable energy and sustainable development. The Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications and Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Organizing Committee of the Bahrain International Air Show, the BIAS, Kamal bin Ahmed, said today that the participating companies in the event increased to 120 from 139 countries. He added that the facilities provided is easing entrance and exits of the BIAS visitors who are seen to watch the display. The event is expected to see its strongest international presence to date, reflecting the event's growing standing in the global aviation event calendar and cementing strategic relations between key nations. Now, in its fourth edition, the BIAS is a niche aviation event providing its elite list of aerospace business participants the opportunity for high-level networking in exclusive surroundings. Now, an event as big as the Bahrain International Air Show 2016 requires a large amount of planning and preparation behind the scenes. Paul Fraser discovered more in this report. Preparations for the Bahrain International Air Show continue today at Sahir Air Base. For months, the air show has involved various government bodies and NGOs coming together to produce a fantastic spectacle and vibrant business environment. Head of the Air Operations Team, Colonel Mamdou Abdullah Mohana, explained just some of the behind-the-scenes logistics. We are here at the Air Operations Center for the air show. We work as a team with all my colleagues here to provide the services for all participating in the air show. We are actually a combination of a few agencies, the Royal Bahraini Air Force, the Bahrain Civil Aviation, and FAMBRA. As you can see around me here, we have uh, the people working with me as a team. We have Bahrain International Services, which provide all the services for the aircraft that will land here. Of course, aircraft lands here are um, different uh, types and uh, nationalities. Uh, we have the military and the civil, uh, commercial trade. Uh, plus, we have FAMBRA team to the side there. We have the civil aviation on uh, the corner, uh, the Air Force this side, and we have also other people working in different areas, all under the air operation. Uh, we do it for our country, uh, and this is uh, not because it's only our job, but we are all Bahrainis. The air show is a showcase for what Bahrain is capable of doing and showing the world. With increased business participation and record visitor numbers expected, the organizing committee continued to ensure the success of the event. Flight Display Director, Colonel Rashid Bouali. This is the fourth air show of Bahrain International Air Show. The air show, I can see it very clearly. It gets bigger and bigger and larger and larger. And we saw many people, they want to participate as, uh, you know, in regard the, um, either the ex exhibitors or the aircraft, with their aircraft, to show the people their capabilities and to entertain people. Mainly it is for the trade side. But my job or our job is safety and entertaining the people with the air show. The Bahrain International Air Show takes off on the 21st until the 23rd of January at Sahir Air Base and promises to be the most spectacular yet. At Sahir Air Base for Bahrain Television, this is Paul Fraser.
A very good evening and welcome to the business news here on Bahrain Television. According to the latest Bahrain Economic Quarterly Report, issued by the Economic Development Board, known as the EDB, Bahrain's non-oil sector grew by 4.2% in the first three quarters of 2015. Overall growth in the economy reached 2.4% in the third quarter and 3% over the first three quarters combined. Economic growth was underpinned by robust performances across a number of sectors. In particular, hotels, restaurants and social and personal services were among the key drivers of growth within the non-oil sector for Q3 2015. Transportation and communications also saw strong growth of 6% during the quarter. The Bahrain All Shares Index closed today at 1,196.27 points, an increase of 0.41 points above yesterday's closing level. The rise was in the industrial sector, but investors traded mainly in the investment sector, representing 66% of total share value traded. In total, today 25 transactions took place, involving 297,000 shares, sorry, 297,135 shares, worth 71,716 Bahraini dinars. Good evening and welcome to the sports news on Bahrain Television. Starting with the latest handball updates, Bahrain saw off China 41-18 in the 17th Asian Handball Championship at Khalifa Sports City in Isa Town yesterday. It was a second round match in Group B which includes Japan, Syria and South Korea. Bahrain's win sees them sit on top of the table with four points from two games with a goal difference of plus 46. In other matches of the group, Saudi Arabia and the UAE claimed the first draw of the tournament 17-17. Both teams had a tough time getting through their opponent's defense, with the first half ending 7-6 for Saudi Arabia. Second place Saudi Arabia are tied on points with third place UAE, three points each, with a goal difference of plus five and plus four respectively. The other match saw Iran overcome Lebanon 31-26 after leading 16-13 at the end of the first half. Whereas Iran sits in fourth place with one point and a goal difference of zero, China and Lebanon come in fourth and fifth place with zero points and a goal difference of minus 27 and minus 28 respectively.